Hey, what's up, guys? This is Dr. Enoch Cote, the primary care physician you can trust, breaking down the topics you care about in a way that you can understand. And in this latest installment of Natural PCP, I'm going to be talking about turmeric and the positive effects that it has proven to have on inflammation as well as acute and chronic pain. Hello everybody, welcome back to Trust PCP. If you're new to the channel, I'm Dr. Enoch Cote, a primary care physician. And on this channel, I strive to give you honest, straightforward breakdowns on relevant topics in the world of primary care. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to Trust PCP and hit that bell notification icon so you can stay up to date. All right, so let's talk turmeric. I know some of you are probably more familiar with it than others. Um, I wanted to make a video on this because I know a lot of my viewers are interested in herbal remedies and alternative ways to treat uh, common medical conditions. And arthritis is definitely one of the most common conditions that I see in a primary care setting. And I'm always going to be all ears, especially when I hear about a herbal remedy potentially having some really good evidence or some really good data in terms of being effective uh, for some of these medical conditions. So in a little bit, I'm going to go into some of the details of some of the clinical trials that I've seen on turmeric. But first, let's go into a little bit of background about turmeric. It derives from a plant called curcuma longa, which is in the same family as ginger. And as you can see, they look similar. Turmeric has been used in many different forms. The root of the flowering plant can be boiled and then sun-dried. When you boil it in water, you can also dry it and grind it into a powder to make a spice. Um, it can also be made into what is referred to as an essential oil when a dry root has been steam distilled and you do an extraction. Um, it has been around for thousands of years, and the earliest uses are in India and Southeast Asia as a dye for fabrics, and then as a food coloring. It's also been used for its medicinal properties, and the active ingredient playing a role in that is curcumin, which can be chemically extracted through a very complicated process. I've actually been using quite a bit of turmeric myself. Um, I, I mince turmeric and I incorporate it into a lot of my tomato-based stews that I like to cook. Um, I've been using the ground uh, spice uh, turmeric for vegetables and meat and seafood and so forth. And also I've been taking these emergency packets that have ginger and turmeric in them as well. I love ginger and I'm actually going to make a separate video on that in the future. Um, but for many of you that are familiar with my channel, you know that I'm a firm believer in vitamin C, especially emergency packets um, and their ability to help boost your immune system and protect you from serious illnesses, from, uh, from viruses and colds and things of that nature. Um, I started taking it uh, about two years ago, and ever since I started taking emergency packets pretty much every day, I've gotten a lot less colds. I haven't really had any major illnesses ever since then, and I've definitely been taking it all throughout this pandemic. Um, so I can also leave a link to this down below as well, but uh, it's turmeric and ginger um, flavored vitamin C or emergency packets. Um, so yeah, I have a pretty good experience with turmeric and, you know, sometimes it's hard to tell if it has any kind of direct effect on me, but, you know, one uh, instance that I can think about is uh, recently I had um, some, some localized pain that I was dealing with and um, I was taking Tylenol uh, for a couple of days to help with the pain and, and it wasn't really doing that much. But then when I kind of uh, stopped taking a, reg a regular emergency packet and switched over to the turmeric and uh, ginger emergency packet, um, it actually kind of, I felt like it made a difference. Um, the pain kind of went away right away. Now, it's also possible that maybe the pain was eventually going to go away by itself. That's true. Um, but, you know, I felt like as soon as I started taking that, there was a little bit of a difference. So who knows? And that kind of goes into turmeric having the ability to, you know, help with inflammation. And inflammation is one of the things that actually causes pain in and of itself. So what do we know about the effects of turmeric? Well, we know that um, in terms of from a nutritional standpoint, it's made up of many different things, including uh, carbohydrates and uh, fiber, um, proteins. It also has some dietary fats in there as well. It has important vitamins such as vitamin C, uh, my favorite vitamin, um, and also um, minerals like zinc, which is also a good one for the immune system as well. And it also has important electrolytes like sodium and potassium. And when it's broken down in the lab, it has many chemical ingredients, including curcumin, which is the main active ingredient that we believe um, has an effect on inflammation. When they perform experiments on human cells in a laboratory, these ingredients have been shown to stop uh, cancer cells from multiplying. And some of the studies that they performed were on colon cancer cells, liver cancer, lung cancer, kidney cancer, bone cancers, and blood cancers as well. 
Now, I should emphasize that these were studies performed in a laboratory on cells. So these were not performed on actual patients to see whether or not they live better or uh, live longer um, from taking turmeric. And we can't say that turmeric for sure is actually any kind of treatment or a cure for cancer. Turmeric is also an antioxidant. So a lot of you have probably heard that term before and probably wonder exactly what that really means to be an antioxidant. Um, when we think about oxygen, this is a good thing, right? You know, it's something that we need to live, we need it to breathe. Um, but the good oxygen is actually something that exists in a, a stable form. Uh, but sometimes oxygen can exist in an unstable form that has the ability to damage tissues and cells in our body. And basically when something is an antioxidant, it kind of stops this process of these unstable oxygen molecules from damaging the body. And turmeric is one of the substances that has been shown to be able to kind of help slow down that process. Turmeric also slows down inflammation. So now inflammation is basically just the process of our immune system, which is the cells in our body that help fight off germs and infections and things that don't belong there. Um, actually just going haywire and instead of just kind of doing what it's supposed to, does too much and causes pain and swelling throughout our body. Um, so turmeric has been shown in many different laboratory studies and experiments to help slow down this whole process of inflammation. Now that's important because one of the main things that I wanted to discuss in this video is the fact that turmeric has actually been shown to slow down pain and inflammation in human studies as well, not just in a laboratory. So there was a systematic review published in 2016 that looked at multiple randomized control trials studying the ability for turmeric to treat arthritis pain. And a lot of these were smaller studies, but they were basically comparing turmeric to placebo or to common anti-inflammatory arthritis medications like ibuprofen. And in some of the studies, turmeric was uh, taken along with anti-inflammatory medications and compared to placebo. Um, the outcomes that they were looking at um, were improvement in arthritis pain and um, better ability to kind of function with arthritis as well. And overall, these studies showed that turmeric had additive benefits when taken along with NSAIDs or um, non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs like ibuprofen. Um, and also turmeric was more effective than placebo in and of itself or just as effective as NSAIDs. So just as effective as something like ibuprofen, um, but with less side effects. Uh, when it comes to treating uh, chronic pain and inflammation. So what's the best way to take turmeric and what's the best dosing? Well, it's not really clear in terms of what form of turmeric is really more effective in terms of um, being uh, beneficial for pain and inflammation. Um, but in terms of the actual dosing and those trials that I mentioned uh, that were in that systematic review, um, they kind of varied in terms of how much turmeric uh, the study of subjects were actually taken. And some of them, they were taking as little as 500 milligrams in a day. And other ones, they were taking up to 1500 milligrams of turmeric in a day. And in this emergency packet, there's only 100 milligrams of turmeric. So who knows, maybe some of the other components in this packet are actually kind of working alongside it to, to have an effect or, or to have a benefit. Um, but in terms of how much to just take in general in order to get the maximum benefit from it, it's not really clear. So are there any side effects or any dangers to taking turmeric? Well, this is why anytime you start something, it's important to make sure you still discuss it with a primary care doctor because what works for one person might not necessarily be appropriate for another person. So in the case of turmeric, one of the side effects that has been reported in some of those clinical trials is stomach upset. And something that's very important to know about turmeric is that it's actually a blood thinner. Um, it's been shown to actually slow down the body's uh, process of natural clotting. Um, so, you know, this could be good for somebody who's in general good health that's just taking it daily to make sure they don't develop blood clots. Um, but uh, some people actually have a history of um, some major bleeding conditions, um, whether it be stomach bleeding or a brain bleed or, um, you know, bleeding from anywhere else in their body. So if that's the case, it's probably not a good idea to take turmeric for them because it can put you at risk for um, more bleeding events. Um, and also for people that have a history of um, some kind of clot or, or are actually on a uh, blood thinner for some other kind of serious condition, it might not be a good idea for them to take turmeric either because it can interact with their blood thinning medications and it make their blood too thin and put them at risk for things as well. And along those lines, turmeric shouldn't be uh, considered something that you would use to replace any of those blood thinning medications that are prescribed to you by a doctor because with those medications, we know exactly what doses are effective at treating certain conditions where in the case of turmeric, we have no idea exactly what dose would be uh, needed or be effective or safe to treat any kind of uh, serious medical condition. So 
that's what I got on turmeric, guys. I know uh, personally in the future, I plan to incorporate it more in terms of my treatment plans for uh, pain and inflammation and arthritis and things of that nature. Um, so I can use less of these other medications that have other side effects um, that could be dangerous as well. Um, if you have any questions about it, make sure you drop a line down below. Um, make sure you subscribe to Trust PCP if you haven't already. And check out some of the links that I have down below for some of the products that I've used as well. Thank you for watching and peace out.